Hey there, viewers of the Tribe Drake channel that I really need to get busy on. I'm kind of slacking, if you know what I mean. But we've had no internet for quite a while, and we just got a got a little upgrade with a dish that's facing this tower over here to the north. First, I've hey, I've made it home, and I'm back in the peace again, where I hear. No excavators, no generators, no hammer drills. Minimal people talking, other than my kids over there. They're where uh, we're going to shoot our bows and do what we do every night because you got to balance your time. You got to balance your time at work and with your family. And, uh, oh, take a look. Can you guess who we're missing here? No more big red. We got the uh, old squeaky here. She's feeding up pretty heavy. So that's my dad's and my brother's hog. Last weekend I butchered the big one. He was kind of a bully to her. So I rendered him down into a family size packaging that I will save for a later date. So basically what I'm going to do here, this ain't going to amount to much, just my normal thing. I won't, this rotted strap might break and I'll fall and it'll make for a good video for you, but not me. So I'm, I'm just sitting out here with my bow. I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. I haven't, I haven't shot today yet, but for those of you, you, most of you probably already know what the heck I got here and it's nothing new, but I'm going to do a few shots. I got the Slick Trick Grizz Trick. This is a 125 grain, inch and a quarter cut four blade. I've shot a few deer with these. They fly great. Even with fingers out of a compound and an Oneida, which is basically a compound, but it has the recurved look. And I like fixed blade heads. I killed my first deer with a Zawicki cut down two blade. And it was probably 150 grains out of a PSE um, Spirit bow, which I have in my little bow shop. And I still have that. I kind of, I want to restring it. And it's a compound with little energy wheels. It's a good shooting bow. So that was in 1991, I, be I believe, 92, 91, 92. I was eight years old. First day of hunting season just took my hunter education course first evening i got off the school bus and my backpack was full of magazines and deer hunting books and all the important stuff because you got to know this because herds need balanced and i'm the person just to do that but i was eight years old and i uh, got off the bus and my dad was still working and my grandpa was waiting on me to take me on my first bow hunt so I got off the school bus. We go back there first evening, first day, October 1st. He got me up this tree, a homemade wooden built tree stand. He told me good luck. He climbed down. I was all strapped in. I had my, my PSC spirit bow with a little aluminum arrow and my Zwicky cut down two blade that my dad always used. He cut and made some cut downs. Mine didn't have the bleeder in it. And my grandpa set it up because I was low poundage. He did not glue on the uh, the broadhead with the heat glue. So he left. Big Doe comes in. I'm telling you, he just turned the corner to go towards this little dump site. It's old, old little area, but a lot of deer cross through this section in this ravine. And he, he just made that corner and I look up in the thicket and here comes a big doe heart started hammering and with now I look back at it she she heard us messing around there and then she was probably watching him walk away and she wanted to come out and see what the scuffle was all about so I let her come out I got my got my bow I'm shaking single cobra brass pin sight pin just to kiss her button I didn't like messing around with no peep sights and uh, I had a limb coming up right in front of us and her her vitals were just 
right beside it. I shot my first arrow and I kind of pulled my head like I do in some of my videos with this camera on my head. And I hit that damn limb just to the left. That arrow ricocheted and she had no idea. So she's looking around where the arrow hit down there on the ground about 15 yards by her because it ricocheted. I loaded up another arrow and just smoked her tin ring. Arrow went in about that far. Broadhead stayed in. An arrow came out and she ran about 25 yards, looked around, fell over. <laughs> that was the best thing ever because that's where it all started. So every hunting season I get ready and I'm always excited about it. And I'm never ever going to miss a hunting season. And most of you know why, because hunting is perfect. And if you take the time to go hunting and take your kids hunting and you can see the smiles on their faces, you can get food for the table and you can balance the herds because the herds need balancing. There's a lot of rabbits around here. The deer had fawns and a lot of people will explain this to you. Waddell, Uncle Ted, you got to get out there and hunt clean air soil and water it all makes a difference that's where it comes from fishing hunting and trapping all good things we ain't buying salads or we ain't going to shoot salads you've never seen a, a hieroglyphic on the wall of a temple of somebody spearing a salad get over it all right we'll get off that and uh we're gonna do some shooting i'm gonna have to get vesper over here hell let's just walk over there i'll carry my bow there's them there's my birds they really want to come out but you know what i just hate when they shit all over the yard and then i step in it those pine trees i've got right there and that peach tree up front i planted about eight years ago when vesper was a baby and they were only about knee high so it's pretty cool. I wish I had like 1,200 acres. I could just grow my own forest and do all kinds of cool stuff. But this day and age, it's like you can't even barely afford to drive anywhere. It's complete bullshit. What are you guys doing? Look at that. She has her hammock set up in the trees that I planted when you were a baby. You want to come hold this camera and we'll shoot this grizz trick? Sure. Ow! Come on. Come on, camera girl. Axe is out here golfing. So yeah, that we we golf too. I used to golf when I was in my teens, and I think I've told you this, guys, all, all all this crap already. But I had to pick something else up because my normal routine, I'd come home, and me, Vesper, and Axel will always do something. But a lot of the times, I would shoot. I, I guarantee you, I'd shoot 50 plus arrows a night, and I just I need to I can't do that trashing my back muscles sometimes you develop bad habits and you just don't need to but playing a little bit of golf like he's he's addicted to it you even like golfing don't you mm -hmm. yeah i mean you got to make yourself better at golf it's a, it's a it's a sport where you have to have discipline <laughs> and your mindset on hitting that ball perfectly every time with perfect form a perfect swing <laughs> It just, you got to do everything perfect, don't you? And you always get mad. I do sometimes, but I'm developing a nice swing. <laughs> I'm actually, for you golfers, I am, my lowest score so far, I believe was an 83 and or an 84. And I'm only a few months back into it. So I want to, I want to get down to the 70s. That feels good. You think golfing's pretty hard to smoke that ball perfect every time? Mm -hmm. It's pretty fun, ain't it? Mm -hmm. kind of an individual sport and i like that kind of like shooting your bow and going hunting although you do it together but only you can make yourself better oh yeah i know i got a lot of videos with old Vern in them but he's growing a little bit i need to give him another shave but i'll just show you him because i got a couple where he's taking a dump in the background or something but there he is what are you doing, buddy? Huh? Get down. Sit pretty. Sit. 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 Sit pretty. Sit pretty. Sit pretty. Come on. No, he ain't gonna sit pretty. He only does that for treats. Vesper, come here. 
Yes, sir! All right, get about right there. I'm gonna get down here because I, you know, I either got a real bad pulled groin or I got a hernia. I don't know. So hopefully it goes away. Either way, unless I absolutely have to, I ain't going nowhere and it's gonna self heal. It is too close to hunting to even be messing with that crap. All right, here, look. So I got this grizz trick on here. I'm gonna go for the deer kill, for the heart shot on that deer without a head on it. Cause I don't, I got a new target in the shed over here, but I don't quite want to bust it out yet. So stink, pretend we're on a bow hunt. You come in behind me. Oh, and hey, hey, we're not golfing. We're, we're bow shooting right now, Axe. Vesper's my cam girl. We're gonna see how this grizz trick flies. Tell me when you're all good. I'm gonna get settled in, okay? I'm good when you're ready. Give me that, you little monkey, or just come down here. Okay, I released that arrow, and it just arced up because I'm only shooting. Um, my bow's at 49.6 pounds. You believe that? Nice, mm -hmm. graceful, just mush. You draw it back, really graceful, and you practice with it, and it makes it a lot more fun than just horsing back a bunch of weight. Which, hell, I could pull 80 pounds if I want to, but that's not realistic to me. Here, now walk up there, monkey, and... Show them where that arrow went. And that is right in the ballpark of where I was looking. Right in there. Oh my God, did you hear that deer grunt? Are you kidding me? Did you just crap? No. Oh. Where's you? And there we go. Does that have a little bit of an aroma to it? Hello, friend. Yeah. yeah. All right, so I'm going to go back here. We're here. And I, since I got the trailers parked over there, we're going to go back here to my normal spot where I've been shooting a lot of stuff on video. We're going to go go back there to 50 yards. I'm going to see if I can put one in here. Two. One. Are you rolling, monkey? Yep. My little vid cam girl. Hey, how come you guys always call me during the day and want me to come home? Because we love you. You do? Mm-hmm. You always want me to come home and play? Yeah. I know. Well, you got to go to work so you can have a nice place to live, too. But you don't have to go work all the time. You got to balance it, okay? Mm -hmm. Always remember that balance. Otherwise, nothing's ever fun anymore. Mm -hmm. Because you just waste all your good years. You guys know. You guys on the video should know that, too. Always get that balance going. That balance work could go a long way. Balance the herd, balance your life, and balance on your balance beam at your classes. Mm -hmm. All right, here. This is exactly 50 yards with the grizz trick. With fingers. Like always. Yep. See if I can shoot worth the crap after working all day, okay? <laughs> now that actually flew really good. I think I just hit a hair low. Here, we'll keep it rolling. We ain't gonna edit it. I was just. I just wasn't holding high enough. I think I would have shot right underneath that deer. First 50 yard shot with the grizz. Big grizz trick, just hit a little low. I consider that not bad. I was holding, good release. That arrow came out of there dead straight. All I saw was him, was him uh, AAE hybrid 26 veins on a hard helical fletched out of the Arizona Easy Fletch spinning nice and that arc of that arrow with that 50 pound bow 49.6 whatever 
was just nice archery you know the arch not the bullet straight shot high speed 400 feet per second just try it arch or right there i'm going to try to shoot shoot me a few six or nine deer with this old grizz trick six i want to Actually, I'm probably I'll, I might shoot one or two with it. Then I'll get out of like a sever 1.5. Use the Slick Trick Magnum because I really like them. I shot a lot of good deer with them. One time out of my Matthews No Cam, I had, this was a hunt I got on the channel too. But the deer walked behind a tree. It was a big buck with one eye following a doe. Had my Matthews No Cam set at like it was maybe 55 pounds, gold tip uh 400 and dude just let one go at about it was like 44 yards and center punched that buck he ran about 60 yards and fell over axel you always got to make sure your lane's clear stink had her bow stash back here and what bow do you got what's that say on it um what is that the bear, what it, what is that word? Royal? Yeah, the bear royal. And this bow's fully adjustable too. It'll go up to what what the heck does that say? I think I thought it was 45 or 50 pounds. 50. Poundage, 50 pounds. It can go up to a 27 inch draw. She can shoot that bow forever if she wanted to, but I mean you always get older and want to get new stuff, so that's how that goes. We'll just give it to somebody else. Axel! He's inside! All right, shut the door. Go in. He might be grabbing his bow, hopefully. We just golfed yesterday. All right, Vesper. Stick one in that deer kill on the block. Ugh. Come on now. Nice and steady, okay? Holy crap. Let's go. Here, go, go show him that arrow. That was a good shot, sister. Oh shit, another butt grunt. Look at that. Where were you aiming at? Uh, hmm? Right there. Right there in that dark spot? Yeah. Well, hell, that's good enough. That's pretty good for your first shot of the day, isn't it? Mm -hmm. This is what we're doing, but I'm going to take another shot. I'm going to see what I can do with this. And for why I'm looking at this. I, this is a GoPro 8 I'm videoing with. And I got these Wasabi batteries. They're, yeah, weird name. I just wanted to try them out because they were kind of cheap. And this was fully charged and now I'm already at a half. So maybe you shouldn't buy those. You know what I mean? Here, Vesper, take this and I'm going to shoot the Grizz and the, again. Dad, I should just have it all the time. Huh? I should just video you all the time. You should. Do you think you can come sit out in the cold with me when we go hunting? And be uh -huh. really still and just run the camera? Yes. Hmm? Yes. You do? Yes. Stay over there, Axe. I can see him through our, our windows. Oh, he has his bow, too. Yes. 50 yards grizz trick. Let's go. Holy shit, I pulled that pulled that one a little bit left. But I'm gonna have Axel come back here. Come here, buddy. Here, he's got a camo boy bear royal with the strata camo. And he has an eight arrow man quiver on there too, don't you? Mm -hmm. Hey, won't you come right here and shoot that deer in the heart on that block? Okay. Make it good. You're on video. Don't worry about this camera. I just want you to draw back and aim good. Okay. Come on, Axe. Draw back, aim good, and I want you to kill that deer. Right in the heart. Okay. Oh. Did you smoke him? No. You didn't. You hit like two inches low, dude. This is a little bit of what we do. 
I really need to get out and do some some public land scouting, which I have one private spot, which I'm still fortunate enough to hunt. It's a nice piece, but I don't think there's any way I could ever afford that unless I just like grow the money tree. So anyway, I'm gonna keep hunting that piece, taking care of it like it was mine. We're gonna balance the herds, the buck to doe ratio, get the coyotes, and we'll get some squirrels. And ducks. And yeah, that's, that's just what we do. If I get permission to hunt a place, I treat it as if it was my own and which you should all the time and hopefully the owner of where you're hunting or just even permission to camp there just treat it as your own do the right thing and all you can do is that i don't know how else to tell you but i'm lucky so far i got a, a good private spot and i haven't even shot a big buck there my dad my brother and vesper the last three years they've shot all the big ones <laughs> i've had a shot and that that's a whole nother story um huge eight huge eight came in right under me and i was shooting the kudu point two blade single bevel right uh right bevel the sucker came in and he got out about 14 yards quartered away and i shot that dude the arrow hit kicked sideways the arrow slapped him in the ribs and it went in tight behind the shoulder. If it would have continued straight, I would have heart shot him. Probably double lungs also. But that kudu point, and I still have it, was bent like that. The sucker hit so hard, hit a rib or whatever, bent that point and right single bevel, it's twisting also. So imagine that, bends to the left, twisting to the right, and it just, arrow blew through him, flew out his shoulder, right through the, I don't even think it penetrated squat. Maybe a little bit of meat, hardly any blood trail. He ran out there 50 yards, looked around, then kept following the doe. So that was another one that got away from me. That video at the end, if they want to watch it. And I don't have that video, which I had that shot on video, but that was the year I got the new Apple computer with the new editing system, and I messed up and lost like three kill shots, two that I got and the one buck that I got screwed on. So that's gone forever, but I remember, and I just shared it with you. But anyway... You guys know I shoot the Oneida Eagle Phoenix. It's a good user-friendly bow. You can rebuild it by yourself. I got that on there, not for a sight, but that's where I put my red light for hunting at night for coyotes, or I'll use it to walk in. I'll use it to walk into my tree stands, and I'll just hold on to my bow, bow grip, or when it's real cold, I'll put my hand around, arm around the string and put my hands in my pockets because my, my hands get cold, them suckers don't want to function. Oh yeah, let's go back and look at the sorghum. This, I only, my little two minus acres, but I grew a heck of a little sorghum patch back here. Axe, is this my hunting spot? Mine. This is your hunting spot, isn't it? So we're back here. This is the oh. back of my little two acres. Oh, check that out. Yeah, I got me a tactic cam. I really like them things. Anyway, this is... Kind of Kirkland. Yeah, we'll throw that in the basket. This is real world harvest salad on this side. And here's the sorghum. So I just got a little bit of nitro... I can't even remember the numbers on the bag I got this spring for, the, for nitrogen. Because corn really likes nitrogen and that's what makes it grow. But check that out. Got some nice sorghum heads. Dad, I can see the trap. Yeah, she sees an old trap. I just left tied to a tree. Um, yeah, look at these. Real girthy stalk on them. I mean, grew really good. And some of those, look at the height of these suckers. 
Dude, them are like at least 12 foot tall blowing up there. But this is a nice little patch. Sometimes the deer will come up and come out of here. And then I was gonna set Axel up right here in this blind where I got this ladder stand right here. We can shoot down here. That's the setup for this. And there's, I mean, there's deer tracks in it, which I know what they are. It's just a couple does and the baby they had. They only had one baby. I didn't ever sell, saw any twins back here, but look at the size of some of this. This big old sorghum heads. Dad, look how tall that stuff Dad. is. Yeah, what? Yeah, I know. What happened? So this is, this is it, man. I mow a little trail right there. And this is the back of mine. This is my uncle's pasture right here. I think it's about 10 acres. I really wish he would sell it to me. I would load that sucker up, plant it about three rows deep in pine trees all the way around, plant oaks, apple trees, we'll have a little food plot section in the middle, and it would be freaking awesome. It would work out so perfect. And uh, all those pine trees right there I planted a long time ago, probably nine, eight, nine years ago, they're growing up. Hey. Got me like a little miniature pine thicket. They were like one or but it's a, what, one, two, three, four. Like an eight tree pine thicket. I mean, yeah, deer might lay under it, but that's all I can do right now. That's all we can do, guys. Yep. We got to get us, a, we got to get us some acreage, don't we? Axe, there's another golf ball. All right, well, heck, let me cruise up here. I'll show you my other little sorghum patch I planted in the yard, and then, then it'll be all over from there. Yep. Now, keep in mind on these plots, I don't use any kind of Monsanto poisons spraying and killing of everything, which I don't agree with at all. Yes, it's, it's all poison. It's a carcinogen, it causes cancer, and I'm not having it on any of my crap. So there's weeds in this, yes, but deer are smart, critters are smart, and they'll pick around the weeds. I actually went through and hand weeded this thing like these, I don't even know what these are. I should, but I don't. I just went through and pulled all these suckers up and uh, and the sorghum took off. This was a couple months ago. Yeah. But look how, like, th this is some regular corn just freaking growing, must have been mixed in with the seed. But there's, this is all sorghum here. Nice, nice heads. Grew really good. Real easy to grow and the deer love it late season. Yeah. What? Um, you can you can take the red heads and then make flour. Yeah, you want to grind them up and make some uh, some cornbread. Uh huh. But yeah, for you guys that just own a little bit like I do, you can make something of it. And this is all native grass through here. Nice little strip, and it's all coming to seed now. But hell, this this stuff will stand really tall. Axe, there's another golf ball. And now we're back up there to the hammock. All right, well, that should do it for now, but I will be back. We need some deer breakfast sausage, don't we? Mm -hmm. Actually, that good actually I just ate the rest of that. My wife cooked up some with some uh, sourdough pancakes. Waffles. They weren't waffles. It's but d dude they were so good yeah it was great so we'll get off here we'll see you on the next video i'm going to try to edit this make my smoothies for work because i drink one in the morning and one at 10 o'clock because i gotta drive so far i gotta balance my meals so i have maximum energy so i can work while i'm at work and then be energetic when i come home because i don't want to be a freaking mattress back so that's what i do so now I want to edit this, maybe play the guitar a little bit. I got to take a shower, make the smoothies, maybe shoot my bow a little more, uh, may yell at Vern. So it's kind of a little bit what I do. And then I'll, in the morning, I'll get back up about 345. I'll be in Indiana. We'll be back on a bridge in the morning working. And then when I'm all done, 
which I ain't gonna stay there all day. I'll haul ass back home and we'll try to be productive at our house tomorrow evening, which I might make another video I don't know yet. Do you, Ax? I don't know. I might have to take him golfing because he loves doing that. It's just something you gotta balance every single day. Don't put it off while you're here breathing air. Balance, balance everything. The hunting season's here, the air is cool. Look at it blow. We'll see you on the next one.